Soren Kierkegaard on the Others From Three Discourses at the Communion on Fridays Published November 13, 1849 as translated by Sylvia Walsh, Indiana University Press, 2011, from pages 102 to 104. And the tax collector stood far off, and would not even lift his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God be merciful to me, a sinner. Luke 18.13 as soon as anyone comes between God and you, regardless of whether it is someone you consider more perfect than you, or someone you consider more imperfect, you then get a fraudulent criterion, the criterion of human comparison. It is then as if how far off you are could be measured after all, and thus you are not far off. But the Pharisee, who certainly, according to the words of Scripture, stood by himself, was he then not standing far off? Yes, if he had truly stood by himself, he would then also have stood far off. But he did not truly stand by himself. The Gospel says he stood by himself and thanked God that he was not like those other people. And when one has those other people with one, then one certainly does not stand by oneself. The Pharisee's pride consisted precisely in this, that he proudly used those other people to measure his distance from them, that before God he could not manage to get past the thought of those other people, but held on to this thought in order then to stand proudly by himself, in contrast to those other people. But this is certainly not to stand by oneself. Least of all is it to stand by oneself before God. The tax collector stood far off. Being conscious of his own guilt and offense, he perhaps found it easier not to be tempted by the thought of those other people, who after all he must admit were better than he. About that, however, we shall decide nothing but it is certain that he had forgotten all the others. He was alone, alone with the consciousness of his guilt and offense. He had entirely forgotten that, after all, there were also many other tax collectors besides him. It was as if he were the only one. He was not alone with his guilt directly before a righteous man. He was alone before God. Oh, that is to be far off. For what is further away from guilt and sin than God's holiness, and then oneself a sinner, to be alone with it, is that not to be infinitely far off? And he would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, that is, he cast his eyes down. Yes, well, what wonder? Even physically there is something in the infinite that overwhelms a human being because his eye can find nothing upon which to fix itself. This effect is called dizziness, so one must shut one's eyes. He would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but he, who with downcast eyes turned inward, only saw into his own wretchedness, did not look sideways either, like the Pharisee, who saw this tax collector. For we indeed read that he thanked God that he was not like this tax collector. The Pharisee proudly found satisfaction in seeing the tax collector. The tax collector humbly saw no one, not the Pharisee either. With downcast eyes turned inward, he was in truth before God. What hypocrisy could there very well be in the cry of one for whom the abyss opens in distress at sea? even though he knows that the storm mocks his feeble voice, and that the birds out there listen to him indifferently, he nevertheless cries out. To that degree the cry is genuine and true. 